Attention Bitcoin holders, this is what they are not telling you about this major dump that Bitcoin just had. This is what you have to know. Pay close attention. Welcome back if you are returning. If you're new, welcome in. Hit that subscribe button for less stress and more success. Hit that subscribe button right now, turn on the bell, and hit that thumbs up button. Did you hit that subscribe button? Do that right now. Feel free to follow us on the Twitters if you want more information about the charts, Crypto Crew you on the Twitters. Now there's some major developments with this recent dump in Bitcoin, but let me play you a very critical message. Critical, critical, critical. Listen closely. It means that it's highly probable that over the next three-ish months, we're going to come back down to this 21 AMA. And that will be the biggest test of Bitcoin's history. It's going to shock everybody that it will drop that. That video was made almost two months ago. We said over the next three months, we're going to drop down to the 21 EMA and it's going to shock everybody. That's what we've just done. This is the 21 EMA in yellow. Back when we made the video, it seemed highly unlikely that we would ever drop there. Everybody was super bullish. Elon Musk was bullish. And then we fell all the way down here. This is a good thing. We needed this. In fact, if you look at the history of Bitcoin and its 10 year history, this period was from this date, from September 2020 to current day. This was the longest period in Bitcoin's history that it hadn't touched the 21 EMA. The longest in history. That's a major occurrence. In fact, we made a whole video about it two months ago saying, look, this is the longest time in history. And we're going to come back. Everything reverts back to the mean. So now we're here. And that was probably a pretty incredible buying opportunity to buy right as we touched here. OK, and history tells us that during a bull run, that is incredibly important. Yes, we had a MACD cross. Yes, there's some other things happening in the chart, but let's take a look at it from a different point of view, right? This is the log growth curves, and we're looking at a couple cycles, cycle number one, cycle number two, cycle number three. We're gonna break down the three most recent cycles. And simply put, this is a monthly chart, right? And simply put, we have the RSI at the bottom. And usually in each market cycle, we have two touches up here around the 93, 94 level, right? And that signals our top. And then we move into the next cycle. We have one touch point, And then many months later, we'll have another touch point, And that signals the top of the market. We've had one touch point. We're right on schedule, right? We're having a nice correction down. Where can it go? Well, the cycle back here and a lot of this market structure is built around this 70 level. If Bitcoin, 68 level, if Bitcoin were to go below 68 on the monthly, I would be concerned. I am not concerned right now. In fact, if we're gonna repeat the 2013, we topped out at this red bar, right? This red line, I think it's this 78 fib level, right? We went right to that red line and we made multiple videos about that, right? We went right to this red line and we got rejected. And look, this is right on schedule. This is what Bitcoin is supposed to do. We topped out once, we're looking for our second top out and we're looking for confluence, right? So there's nothing to be concerned about in the big picture, everything is just fine. We were supposed to come back to this 21 EMA. We were supposed to get rejected from this level on the monthly RSI, right? And now let's take a look at our short term buy signals, right? This is the Fibzia 265, right? And we, we say basically if we go into this dark green territory in a bull run, historically, it's a pretty good time to buy. If we go into the orange territory, it's a really good time to buy. It's in fact almost incredible, right? So we're not quite there. The yellow to orange territory starts currently right now at about 42,940. Can we go this low? We could. We could very well go this low. And if we do, it's an incredible buying opportunity. You better be scooping up your Bitcoins. And by the way, you may ask, hey, if we go that low, that means we're gonna go below here. Well, we could go below with a wick, 
right? We could even go below with a little bit of the body. What we don't want to see, and which we've never done in Bitcoin's history, is close a full body below the 21 EMA as resistance. We've never done that. We've had bodies in between, right? Not technically as resistance, we've had bodies break this 21 EMA, but not hold as resistance. So that's what I would look for in current, present day, the 21 EMA as we speak is at about 47. So could we wick all the way down here to a, you know, a 40, a 42? Yeah, we could. We gotta be ready for that. And again, this is a great opportunity to scoop up some Bitcoin. There's a lot of confluence in the charts that say, hey, we're in some short-term turmoil, but the big picture is still phenomenal. In fact, this is incredibly healthy for Bitcoin right? And the reason is here. You follow our channel, you know very well about these three boxes. We're inside of our consolidation, right? The bottom of the box, 1.5x multiple previous all-time high. Top of the box, 4x multiple previous all-time high. Inside of here, we keep in here for a handful of months, right before our parabolic blow off top, right before the market really starts to move. And look, look at what happened afterwards, look at what happened afterwards. This is our period of consolidation and the period of consolidation forms the market structure for the next bear market. A couple of years from now, Bitcoin will be hanging out around this price. And maybe you're watching the video a couple of years from now and like, oh my God, Steve predicted the future. No, we're just using the facts and the charts and this happens in every single cycle. And by the way, in every single cycle, this is when people freak out. They say, oh my God, the bull market is over. We're gonna crash down. This is it, I'm selling everything. And generally speaking, when you have the strongest urge to sell, that's generally the best time to buy. Think about it. How long have you been in crypto? Think about the time that you, you right there, had the strongest urge to sell. Think back, that was probably the best time to buy. And then the exact opposite is true. Your strongest urge to buy is probably the best time to sell. You probably had the strongest urge to buy when we were up above 60,000. Oh my God, we're gonna keep going to 100,000 like everyone said. No, we do the exact opposite of the herd and that's why the majority of the people fail in trading, simply put, right? So hopefully this message helped you. Right. So this is what they're not telling you. Right. Look at the big picture. Take a couple steps back. Some short term turmoil. A lot of people thought we would never, ever touch the 21 EMA. We thought it was highly, highly probable. In fact, we called for it to happen within a three month period. And by the way, here we are two months later and here we are right perfectly smack on the 21 EMA. Nothing to be concerned about. Take a deep breath. Don't panic like the herd. Just stay confident and stay focused. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Hit that follow button, hit the like button, and I'll put a video, uh, potentially this one, for you guys to watch on what our thoughts were a couple months ago. Now, a quick word for Steve's secrets to success. A lot of people try to go through life avoiding failure. Oh my God, if I do this, I might fail. Oh my God, if I do this, what are people gonna think about me? What are they gonna say about me? And what is my family gonna think? What's my wife or kids gonna think? And then we just avoid it at all costs. I would highly recommend that you try to fail way more than you're doing now. If you fail, that's the only time you learn. If you keep getting a W after W after W, you're not learning anything. You need those L's, you need failure. I've had plenty of failure. I've started several companies um, that were just a total disaster. They were a total disaster, right? One of, one of the, the big ones for me was I started this dating app uh, back in, wow, gosh, I was about 25. So nine years ago uh, or, or 10 years ago, I started this dating app and it, it was a complete train wreck, right? It was before Tinder was cool, it was before dating apps were cool, but I thought it would be a cool idea to start this new dating app and do it in this different way. And this, it was a total train wreck, but I learned so much. That was my first real taste of starting a traditional company, right? And there's many others. There's many others that I did where I'm like, hey, I wanna do this and I, and I do it and it's like somewhat successful, but I make a whole bunch of mistakes and learn a whole bunch of lessons. So fail. 
fail fast, fail often, fail as often as you can. That will give you substantially more success. And by the way, I was trying to do some thinking in my head. I'm 36, so it was 11 years ago when I started that. And I may have been even 24, it may have been 12 years ago, but at any rate, it was a complete failure. And I learned a ton. So fail more, fail often, fail fast. And I'll see you right back here on the video. I've got some bangers coming for you in this market to keep you level-headed, some incredible information. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment down below. I'm gonna read all of those comments and I'll see you right back here on the next video. Peace and love to the fellow underdogs.